appeal to heaven, not on my watch. I have posted watchmen on the walls, Jerusalem. They will never be silent, day or night. Prayer releases the power of prophecy. Appeal to heaven, not on my watch. Well, welcome to the first night of our Appeal to Heaven, and we've entitled this year, Not on My Watch. And uh, you can pick up your little booklet on your way out, or you can download it off the internet and uh, stay connected with us. And, you know, the Bible's called us as watchmen. Yeah. And uh, I was reading an interesting passage in the book of Daniel, chapter 4. Daniel, chapter 4, speaks about the King Nebuchadnezzar and how that he had a dream and an angel came and spoke to him through the dream. And the Bible called the angel a watcher. And the watchers, woo, the watchers, the angels of the Lord encamp around about those who fear Him. So I'm excited about the next 40 days. Man, today has been an amazing day. God is the God of miracles. Amen. And uh, I know that ministers and leaders from around the nation have been on a, a live Zoom call with President Ramaphosa and leaders of our nation and when Pastor Nev and I left, uh, the call was still not done. And so we're trusting God that we're going to be able to fill every seat in this auditorium. Yes, yes. <laughs> we just flew back from Durban. I went to see my mom and that airplane was filled all 222 seats, no social distancing. <laughs> so tonight's an exciting night and we want to welcome Bishop Korma, who's watching us from Pulukwani from Potter's House. Thank you for being with us and you're going to be on with us next uh, Wednesday night. And of course, tonight we have Bishop Larry Gathers with us from New York, and he's going to be sharing the word of God with us. Man, so, I'm. It's an exciting night, and we want to welcome. Bishop I, I don't know. Who's watching us? What? From uh, we have our three second delay. I don't know what's happening in the. <laughs> Maybe that was my angel talking. <laughs> It's probably Pastor Neville's worst nightmare to hear my voice twice over. But I wanted to just draw your attention while we're getting ready to go to Bishop Gators. Uh, and our verse for the day is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 to 19, that the Lord, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that He will give to you and I the spirit of wisdom and revelation, in the knowledge of Him, that the eyes of our understanding. Father, we pray tonight that as the bishop preaches, that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened, that we may know the hope of our calling and what are the riches of our inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness won't you say that with me? The exceeding greatness of his power toward me because I'm a believer and I'm not a doubter. And so as the believers of God, we gather together tonight. So I don't know where you are, honey. We want to just welcome Bishop Gathers and uh, he's going to share the word with us. For those of you watching via live stream, the churches in uh, Strandfontein and uh, Belleville churches are watching. Strandfontein, Belleville, Belleville, and those joining us in the U.S. Healing Word and Christian Yes, Center. we have a number joining us all the way in California as well of churches. And for those of you who want to support the ministry, you can go to the Give button. And of course, Bishop Gathers has his information up there as well. And we want to honor him as the servant of the Lord. He's a radical. He told me that he was a, a hit man for Christ, <laughs> that he was God's hit man. That's so right. can we bring him up 
and just welcome him, guys. Are we there? The exceeding greatness of the power of God. Amen. Why don't you just raise your hands? You, We're going to receive Father. right now. We thank you, our precious Heavenly Father. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you for your word. We thank you that you said the eyes of our understanding will be and are being enlightened so that we do know the exceeding greatness of your power and your power towards us who believe according to the working of your mighty power. We thank you, your mighty powers that work within us, working through us, and we, your children, declare this is a season of the mighty working you, power of God. Would you say it with me? That, that verse there says power, 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 power. It uses all four Greek words for power. Would you say it and with so me? And so our theme is not on my watch. That's why I was so excited about those angels being called watchmen. This season is entitled Not On My Watch. Not On My Watch. And this is 40 days that we have set apart with one purpose, to touch the heart of God and bring hope and healing. So how many of you are ready? Besha, there you are. There we are. Welcome yes. back to South Africa. We're going to do enough of this virtual stuff, and sh very soon you're going to be showing up here in person. All right, uh, Dr. Neville and Dr. Wendy, and to um, the saints of God there in Cape Town, South Africa. It is such a great honor to be back with you guys in the war uh, room once again to take part in this powerful international conference of not on my watch appeal, appeal to heaven. So I, first I give honor to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And beside him, there is no other savior or God. I give honor to um, the Honorable Dr. Neville McDonald and to the Honorable Dr. Wendy McDonald. Uh, it, it just seems, it just seems like we have a kindred spirit between us and that we've known each other all of our lives. But uh, it's, it's a great honor to be with you guys. And I'm going to be uh, discussing today uh, the topic entitled Appeal to Synchronize. Appeal to synchronize. And I would like to go into a quick, quick word of prayer uh, before we get into the furtherance of today's teaching. Eternal God, our Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and beside you, there is no other Savior. Father God, I know that you don't need me, but I certainly need you. Open heaven today, God here in New York City and open heaven tonight there in Cape Town, South Africa, eastward and northward and southward and westward. Pour down revelatory knowledge and insight. I pray God that you will open minds, open eyes, open the eyes of our understanding. We come against every demon and witchcraft spirit not just here in the United States, but all over the world. And we pray, God, that you would teach us the application of your truth. And most of all, Father God, reveal this afternoon, tonight, what exactly you are thinking about us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, appeal to synchronize. I want to take two specific scriptures uh, as our scripture text tonight um, and to the saints of God there at uh, Hope Christian Center. My name is Bishop Larry Gators. I am the host and the moderator of the nationally and the internationally syndicated radio show Global Spiritual Revolution Radio um, through the iHeart Radio Network in the iHeart Media Group here in New York City, New York. Also through the Life Radio Network, 92.9 FM, 1460 AM. I am a apostolic assassin and a Pentecostal mercenary. Now, people may say, well, what does that mean, Bishop? God has anointed me to totally decapitate the system of darkness. So 
Let's go to two passages of scripture. Uh, one to the book of the Exodus. Exodus chapter 32, uh, verse 32. We'll go to the numbers here later on, but quickly, Exodus um, to the book called, which is the appeal. But the watch is in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. So Exodus chapter 32, verse 32 is the appeal. And Ephesians 4 and 11 is the watch. Exodus chapter 32, verse 32. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin. And you notice, according to the King James Version, there is a pause, a dash, a line with a semicolon, which means God is thinking. And if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. That is the appeal. Now the watch is in the New Testament. In the writings of St. Paul to the Apostolic Church at Ephesus, uh, chapter 4, verse 11, from whence we shall receive the subject uh, tonight. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. But notice the word uh, and, A-N-D. Now, to you rabbinical Hebrew students, you know of a certainty that Hebrew is not written from left to right, but Hebrew is written from right to left. So Ephesians 4 and 11 can read as such, and or the DNA of God gave some apostles, and the DNA of God some prophets, and or the DNA of God some evangelists, and or the DNA of God, some pastors, and the DNA of God uh, of teachers. So the office of the teacher is the only office where Paul does not denote and some teachers. Why? Because the first four offices must have the ability to teach. So uh, my assignment tonight to uh, the soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ there at the Hope Christian Center uh, is appeal to synchronize. Again, appeal to synchronize. What altar of refuge can a man find when he commits treason against the majesty of reason? So then, as we begin to appeal to the consciousness of God in order for the church to become synchronized. So the reason why we have here in the United States terrorist organizations like Antifa and Black Lives Matter, because the church is out of sequence. And because the church is out of sequence and out of alignment, it's because you have men and women with the right giftings, but they're occupying the wrong office. So then, not on my watch. Is that watch one of uh, observation? Or is that watch one uh, of overseeing a divine apostolic ministry. So then, now we are told by uh, the global powers that be to socially distance ourselves <laughs> um, in the manner of six feet. Now we have 7.7 .7 billion people upon the face of the earth. 40, no, it's 7.7 .7 billion people times six feet equals 46 billion, 200 million degrees of separation. 
Notice the first two numbers, 46. You and I have 46 chromosomes, 23 from the mother, 23 from the father. David's heart had 46 strains where he calmed the nerves of Saul in 1 Samuel 16, 23. The serpent spoke 46 words to the woman in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 downward to uh, verses 4 and 5. So 46 billion, 200 million degrees of separation because we're told by the world powers to separate. Now, as a side note, witches and warlocks going back thousands of years, in order for them to invoke demons, every witch and every warlock had to separate six feet from each other. So then 7.7 .7 billion people times six feet, that's 46 billion, 46 chromosomes, 200 million degrees of separation. Now in Genesis 6, in connection to Enoch 6, 200 angels conspired to genetically alter both the DNA and the RNA of mankind. So appeal to synchronize in order to understand what the watch is, we have to first know who we are. Now, it's not important just to know what we are, but it's critically important to know who we are. So we are producing a generation uh, of preachers who I call non-biblical preachers. They're not true preachers like Dr. and Sister uh, Wendy. So then we're producing a generation of CEOs, chief executive officers, who are building not kingdom, but empire. So what's the difference or the distinction, Bishop, between kingdom versus empire? Empire or multi-million dollar buildings, but there's nothing wrong with that. Empire is buying multiple lyric jets. I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. Empire is when a pastor has to hire a 100 person detail security, but he's only passing a church of 10 people. That's empire. That's not kingdom. So Jesus did not say, thy empire come. Jesus said, thy kingdom come. So in order for us to understand, appeal to heaven, in order for us to understand what the watch is, we have to expose the manipulation of what I call reality, time, and probability. So then there is a spirit of manipulation in the world today called Esokinesis, which is the manipulation of reality through the world media, from whence we get the term medium or witch. Then you have the manipulation of time called chronokinesis. Well, notice God is that which is eternal. So when we talk about time, we're talking about we have an opportunity to appeal to God in order for the church to be synchronized uh, back to God's purpose for our lives. Now, again, we have a generation of people. They know what they are, but they don't know who they are. So many leaders think that the title is who they are. The title is what you're called to do, but it's not who you are. So then appeal to synchronize. Now, before we get into the text of Exodus 32, 32 and Ephesians um, chapter four, verse 11, let's continue to lay this foundation. Now, God has led 
um, the anointed Dr. Neville McDonald and the anointed Dr. Wendy McDonald to activate 40 days of prayer. Now, prayer doesn't mean that the individual is screaming at God. Give me, give me, give, that's not prayer. Prayer means to tap into the thought in the emotion of God. Now, people may ask me, well, Bishop, does God have emotions? Yes. But the difference between God's emotions and our emotions, God's emotions is not emotional. God is not emotional. Though Jesus had wounds, and we're talking about appeal to uh, activate this synchronization. Though Jesus had wounds, but he never allowed his wounds to become infected. That's the difference. So in order for us to understand what we are appealing to and for why we need to be synchronized, we have to come into the knowledge of who we are. Now, there are, uh, there were 108 billion people that lived in history. Think about that. 108 billion people uh, were born in history but only 7.7 .7 billion people exist. Now on the average, the average human being, I'm just kind of laying the foundation uh, concerning uh, to appeal in order to synchronize. That the average person will speak 860 million, 500 words in their lifetime. Well, well, if you add those numbers of eight plus six plus three plus four plus one plus five, and of course plus zero plus zero, you get a very unique number of 27. But there are 27 books in the New Testament. What are you saying, Bishop? I'm saying that you have been designed, okay, on the hope of Christian center has been uniquely designed by God to appeal to the court of heaven in order to save South Africa. Because I have to say South Africa is ran by gangsters. Listen, I told you I'm a contract killer. My job is to expose the head of the snake and I'm going to cut its head off and I'm going, I'm going to push these devils into hell as fast as I can as we're talking about appeal to synchronize. But you and I quickly, we're building this foundation, speak on the average of around 30,000 words per uh, day. But Jesus Christ began his public ministry at the age of 30. So to all of the pastors who are under the apostolic authority um, of Apostle Nathaniel, McDonald and under uh, Apostle Wendy McDonald, it is very important for you to know not just who you are and what you are, but what type of watch has God called you to occupy? Because rabbinically, there are eight watches of both the day and the night that I'm going to reveal in the next 15, 20 minutes as we are schematically laying this foundation of appeal to synchronize. So then, to the pastors, there is a great distinction between career versus calling. Your career is what you paid for, but your calling is what you're made for. So the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ is not a career. The ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, God did not call 12 CEOs or 12 bosses. He called 12 disciples. Now the term disciples, it simply means disciplines, not just followers of Jesus, discipline. So he calls 12 distinct disciplines that they not 
not that they might preach or lay hands or cast out devils first, but he called 12 disciples that they might be with him. That's not empire, that's kingdom, that's relationship. As we're breaking down this foundation, man, I love to teach here, uh, concerning appeal to synchronize. So then the minister is called by Christ first to be developed in order to be enveloped. Let me say this again. So the minister, the pastors of Hope Christian Center are called to be developed by Jesus in order to be enveloped by his Christhood, okay? So what does it mean to be enveloped, E-M? It means to come into the knowledge of the fulcrum of who you are, not just what you're called to do, but who you are. As we're talking about appeal in order to be synchronized. So in order for you to walk in complete understanding, there has, to be, there has to be a biblical foundation of what we call understanding. So once understanding takes place, then understanding will follow. So that now remember what Jesus said in the gospel according to St. Matthew is getting deeper now. So as we're talking, Talking about appeal to synchronize. Now, Jesus Christ said, ask and it shall be given you. Circle the word you. Seek and ye shall find. Circle the word find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. Circle the word you. So Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago to help hope Christian Center to help you find you. Oh man, I feel an anointing yeah, here today. So yeah. come into not just the uh, universe. Jesus Christ created the universe. Uni means unity, and verse means the scriptures. So then, students, when you say that Jesus Christ created the universe. You're actually saying Jesus Christ created the unity of the scriptures. So then appeal to synchronize. So life is not a problem to be solved. Life is a mystery to be lived. I mean, I got a, a McDonald's anointing. Amen. Life <laughs> is not a problem to be solved. Life is a mystery to be lived. But notice the first letters of ask, A, seek, S, and not K. It still reveals the word ask. So there in uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, ask, and it shall be given you. Now, what and who is the it? The first letter of the Old Testament is I. The light of the body is the eye. The first letter of the New Testament is T. Did not Jesus Christ say it is finished or it is written? Man proceeded out of the mouth of God. So Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, ask and it, who is the it? Jesus Christ shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Circle find. Knock in the door shall be open unto you. So Jesus Christ has called you during these next 40 days in order to, for you to come into the knowledge of you so that you will have the ability to reopen who you are in Jesus Christ. So this, now remember this as a side point. It is improper 
for a seminary student to speak of God in past tense. God is not a was God. He is and is God. So the witness of Christ produces a, a witness of Christ that will catapult you into a realm that we call the witness in Christ. So then never speak about God in past tense as we're talking about appeal in order to synchronize. Now to the war room here. Not on my watch, appeal to heaven. So then in order for the child of God to properly know why they were born again, we had to examine the teaching of Jesus Christ to Nicodemus in John 3. Jesus never asked a question with a question. Jesus always asked a question with the answer contained within the question. Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? am? Well, that's the answer, the I am, that's contained within the question. So then Jesus teaches Nicodemus as we build this foundation that would bring us to the body of the text of Exodus 32, 32, and Ephesians 4 and 11. So then, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So then, every one of us have gone through these two kingdoms. The, your first birth was when you were conceived through your mother and father to be born nine months later. That which is of the flesh is flesh. That's one kingdom and one law. But there is a second kingdom and second law. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now, when you were born again, it is the complete opposite of your first birth. When you and I were born again in Jesus Christ, we were born again to be reconceived back to God prior to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. So then there is a great distinction. We're talking about uh, appealing to heaven, okay, during this 40-day journey. So then we have to understand that you and I are constantly being born again. Yes, we're born again, but we're constantly matriculating and growing as we are being born again, uh, going back as a seed in the thought of God. This is appeal to be synchronized. Now, there is a great distinction between talents and gifts. A talent is what you're born with from your first birth, but a gift is what you've been born with from your second birth. So a talent, a child is, has a talent of playing a piano. There are talented people in the music industry, but they're not born again, which means they have not received any of the giftings of Christ, they're talented, but they're not gifted. So your talents come from your first birth, your giftings come from your second birth. So let's continue to expose this manipulation of reality, time, and probability. So then a, there are many writers in both the Eastern and the Western hemisphere more specifically, a Russian writer, a Russian playwright, get this, always writes the end of the story before the beginning. And not just Russian playwrights, many playwrights here in America, including South Africa. They always write the end of the story before the beginning. Then they write 
the last chapter first and they write the first chapter last. So in other words, to understand, to appeal to God in order for us to be synchronized, God knows our end from our beginning. So these writers, they, they start with the last chapter first, and then they start with the first chapter last. And they, then they go back to create characters that would bring that story to that end. So then, now we're taught that this is 2020. Well, it's only 2020 because you and I are going by a Gregorian calendar. God is not controlled by a Gregorian calendar, man. I feel, I feel an anointing here today. God is that which is eternal. God did not begin when the beginning began. God began the beginning. God did not start. When the start got started, he started the very start. So then God created before, before became before. Well, let me say this again. God created before, before became before. And every person in Hope Christian Center was already a created entity in the mind, in the thought of God before became before. Oh man, I wish I was right there with you guys in Cape Town, uh, South Africa, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you guys jump in anytime if you have any questions. So quickly here, God created before, before became before. Now I teach, we have a Sunday night global master class online with students all over the world. So then I constantly tell my students, never type or write God in small letters, like a small G, small O, small D. Because if you do that, you're not speaking about the God of heaven, you're speaking about a demon. So then people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So life is not a problem to be solved. Life is a mystery to be lived. Now, there are eight watches in the word of the Lord. Now, as a side point, again, the first letter of the Old Testament is I. The first letter of the New Testament is T. The first letter of the Old Testament, again, is I. But the last letter of the New Testament is in, which also reveals the first word of the Bible. In the beginning, God, or God beginning the I in. Oh, Dr. Wendy, I feel an anointing tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. So then also, before we get into these eight watches, the first letter of the Old Testament is I. The last letter of the New Testament is the word amen. But if you circle the first two letters of the last word of the Bible, amen, and connect the am to the first letter of the word of the Lord, then Hope Christian Center, uh, it reveals I am. Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Oh, my God. I feel like having church tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there are eight distinct watches that the word of the Lord reveals as we are appealing to heaven. And because we want God to be on our lives in order for us to protect the church, amen, not on my watch. So the first watch was is from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The second watch is from 9 p.m. to 12 midnight. The third watch is from 12 midnight to 3 a.m. The fourth watch which Jesus came into the apostles 
during the fourth watch of the night is from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Now, as a sign point, Jesus said to Peter, James, and John, in the garden, could you not watch with me but one hour? I'll come back to that in two minutes. The fifth watch is 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. The, again, the fifth watch, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. The sixth watch is 9 a.m. to 12 noon. The seventh watch is from 12 noon to 3 p.m. And last but never least, the eighth watch is from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Now, there are 24 time zones uh, upon the face of this planet. Now, the time here in New York City is 2.33 p.m. It means that the bishop is occupying the seventh watch. But Cape Town, South Africa is not in the seventh watch. Because right now you're in the first watch between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m., which means God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. He's in your past. He's in your present. He's in your future without taking a step. And it doesn't matter what the devil tries to destroy you with. No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. I want everyone to give God a clap praise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not on my watch. So then the bishop is presently teaching you during the seventh watch. But Dr. and Sister McDonald is occupying the first watch. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, the eight watches is a combination of 12 hours of the day and 12 hours of the night. Remember what Joshua did. Oh, man, I feel an anointing in chapter 10, verse 12. Now, according to timeologists at NASA, they are saying that there is a protracted period of 23 hours and 40 minutes that's missing from time because Joshua in chapter 10, verse 12, and for uh, you uh, mathematicians, okay? Uh, so when we talk about 10 plus 12, 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, another topic for another day. So Joshua commands the sun to stand still upon Gibeah and he commands the moon to stand still upon the valley of Ajalon. Well, why not have the sun to be over Ajalon? Because Ajalon, like Cape Town, South Africa, is in another time zone. So Joshua, who doesn't have the Holy Spirit like you and I have, okay, commands the sun, S-U-N, which is 93 a million miles from the earth. 93, wait a minute now. So the sun is 93 million miles from the earth. Adam lived for 930 years. The first Adam lived for 930 years, which means the first Adam is a tithe of God. Oh my God. Hope Christian Center is a tithe of the algorithm of God's thinking. So then from the sun to the earth is 93 million miles. Adam lived for 930 years. The second Adam, Jesus Christ, was on the cross from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Nine times three equals 27 books of the New Testament. Take the nine and the three and switch them around. You get 39 books of the Old Testament. And I wish I was there in Africa right now. See, this is called to be synchronized or that which is synchronized. Jesus appealed to God 
in order for his cross to sink. Why six hours? Why was Jesus on the cross for six hours? Well, those each hour represents six dispensations. So the dispensation of innocence, consciousness, human government, promise, law, and grace. So then, now somebody may say, well, Bishop, you forgot the seventh dispensation. No, I didn't. The seventh dispensation is the Lamb of God that was hanging on the tree, which took away, which took away the sin of the world. So from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., Jesus Christ was on the cross. So then appeal to heaven in order to be synchronized to God. This is being a what I call an apostolic synchronized person. Now we're going to get ready to go into the text of uh, Exodus chapter 32, verse 32. My God, I wish I was in Cape Town right now. Listen, so in Exodus 32, verse 32, this is what we call the appeal. Now, the question we have to ask ourselves, is it possible to change the mind of God? Yes. So then Moses, or Moshe in Hebrew, was synchronized to God because he appealed to the heart of God. So then uh, Exodus chapter 32, verse 32. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin. Now notice in the King James Version, not the revised King James Version or the new King James Version, the King James Version, after the word sin in Exodus 32, 32, is there is a dash with a semicolon. Well, Bishop, what does that mean? Well, that dash in that semicolon in Exodus 32, 32, in the King James Version, it represents God is thinking about what Moses is asking. So, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. Now, in verse 33, Jesus lived for 33 and a half years. And the Lord said unto Moses, whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Now, if you can also go to Numbers before we get to Ephesians. Numbers chapter 14, verse number 19. Here is a second appeal. Through the prophet Moses, chapter 14, verse 19. Pardon, okay, uh, because Moses is saying, I'm appealing to the court of heaven. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of thy mercy. Now, in verse 20, and the Lord said, I had pardoned according to thy word. How is it that Moses could pardon the nation of Israel because they, through Aaron, built the molten calf, which means Wall Street here in New York City. Man, I wish I had time today. So then Moses occupied the heart of God. In other words, it's not enough just to say, I love Jesus. The question is, are you in love with him? And allow me to say this as a side note here. Man, oh man, I feel like preaching today. It is very important for single men and women. You will not get your wife brothers or your husband sisters through eHarmony.demon match.hell in the Christian confusion mingle. Stop. No, 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 no. I got a spiritual son in Nigeria and he called me six weeks ago and he said, Dad, you know, the Lord gave me my wife. Okay. 
Um, how did you meet her on match? Once, oh, so, Lord Jesus, the devil is alive. Well, wait a minute. When did you meet her on match? Well, two days. We've been together for two days. Wait a minute now. God will not command the man to buy his rib with a MasterCard or an American Express. God is not in that. Sisters, stop chasing these men, man. It's getting quiet there in the war room. Stop chasing men. Bishop, I want a man. Stop, stop, stop. Listen, if that man is broke, busted, and disgusted, lazy, and dirt, don't marry him. I don't care if he looks like Tom Cruise or Brad Pitless. God will sing you a man. Not just from the waist down, but from the neck up. Oh, my God. My God. I feel like preaching here today. Listen, women. The word says, he that findeth. We're talking about uh, appealing to heaven in order to tell the world, not on my watch. Women, the word says, he that findeth a wife. Now, at the same time, I don't believe men should be chasing women. Man, I feel an anointing. No, you don't chase women. I teach men, never allow anyone to depreciate your value. Listen, so God will send you the man, sisters. God will send you the woman, brothers. Just wait on him. Now, you know if they're using a scripture as an excuse today, brother and sister, a McDonald. What Paul says, better than married than to burn. Now everyone is burning up, dog burning up, cat burning up, burning up kitchen because they didn't want to wait on God. Okay, let me get back to the teach. I don't mean to preach. I'm a teacher as well. So then appeal in order to be synchronized. So Moses won both the mind of God and the intention of God. So God tells Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect, which means I'm going to say something radical. Listen, God loves all of us, but God doesn't trust all of us. Oh, my God. Let me say this again. God loves all of us, but God doesn't trust all of us. You have to earn the trust of God. So then we're talking about appeal to synchronize. We're going to appeal to heaven. Which heaven? Well, this seven heaven, well, that's another topic for another day. So then when we talk about uh, appealing to heaven as Moses did, now let's get to what we call the clock or that which is a watch. Now, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, I'm almost done. Man, oh man, I feel an anointing here today. We lay the foundation in the book of the Exodus, uh, chapter 32, verse 32. Now we're going to go to Paul's letter to the church of Ephesus. Notice. So it is not enough just to know that you have Christ in your life. It's critically important to know where God has assigned you. Now, Paul is saying to the Apostolic Church of Ephesus, and he gave some apostles. Stop right there. Notice the word and, capital A-N-D. Now, Hebrew, for you uh, rabbinical students, is written not from left to right, but from right to left. So we can say and God, and he gave some apostles, or the DNA of God has given to the church some apostles, which means every man and woman is not called to be an apostle. Listen, there are young men that, you know, I am shepherding, I'm a spiritual father with uh, young preachers all over the world. Everyone wants to be an apostle, but they can't even spell the word. Everyone wants to be an apostle. They see the blessings, the trappings of what I call apostolicity, but they don't want to go through the suffering, the process to get there. Now, there is what we call the apostolic clock. We we'll talk about now my watch. First, we appealed to heaven. 
Exodus chapter 32, verses 32 and 33. Now it's time to synchronize that appeal through our divine watch or clock. Now, in the natural uh, saints, before we get further into the other four offices, the clock in the natural uh, has five distinct distinctions or manifestations. Well, first of all, in the middle of the clock, you have the fulcrum or that which is many times red. That represents Christ. Christ is in the center of himself as himself never needing to leave himself to become himself and never needing anyone to confirm who he is he's God by himself we call this theocentrica we talked about this last time brother and sister Madal. so then Jesus is theocentrica but Jesus is also theoanthropos He's 100% God and 100% man, not woman, man. Uh, there is a kundalini spirit that has crept into the church telling the entire body of Christ that the Holy Spirit has a feminine side. The devil is a lie. So then, now we come to this clock in Ephesians 4 and 11. So you have the core of the natural clock that controls time, that's Christ. Then you have uh, the shorthand, that's the apostle. You have the long hand, that is the prophet. You have the hour, that is the evangelist. You have the minute, that is the pastor. Then you have what you and I call a second, that's the teacher. Oh my God. So then this divine apostolic clock is synchronized according to the appeal to the heart of God. So an apostle, so the term apostle then uh, comes from the Greek word apostolos, which means one who is sent to lay a foundation, a foundation of what? Of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, it's this is going to be mind-blowing. You probably already know this. When you write the word apostle or apostolic, when you write the word apostolic from right to left, because Hebrew is written from right to left, you get a Latin Vulgate word, silat sopa. Silat sopa means one who decapitates darkness. So in the apostolic, we are anointed to decapitate darkness. That's the office of the apostle. Then we come to the office of the prophet. Every seer is a prophet but not every prophet is a seer. Let me say this again. Every seer is a prophet, but not every prophet is a seer. Now keep a mental paper clip there in Ephesians 4 and 11 and go to 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 9. We're building this building called Appeal to Synchronize, okay? Not on my watch. So then... Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 9. Before time. Now, is Samuel talking about before verse 9? Or is he talking about before time began? Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire. Okay. Listen, I, I and I teach prophets. Listen. God has not called you to invoke God. Witches do that, okay? So my people deserve for the lack of knowledge. So there's a great distinction between invoking versus inquiring. You don't use demonic methods to try to speak to God. So they, he went to inquire, not invoking God, inquire of God, thus he spake, 
Come and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. So one may ask, well, Bishop, as we're talking about appeal to synchronize, right? Not on my watch. Why isn't the ministry of the seer pointed out in Ephesians 4 and 11? Because the seer is not an office. A seer is a location, a place in God where God allows you to see what he sees. My God. God, oh my God. God, in other words, there's not a cloud in sight, but you know rain is coming. So the seer is not an office. It is a spiritual geographical location that God allows you in his consciousness to see what he sees. So then every seer is a prophet, but not every prophet is a seer. But a prophet means pro and fit means to speak. The prophet speaks what the seer has saw. So every seer is a prophet, but not every prophet is a seer. Now back to Ephesians 4 and 11, okay? We go from appeal now uh, to the watch, to be synchronized. So he gave some apostles. So an apostle uh, is a individual who lays foundations. An apostle, one of the qualifications for an apostle is that that individual must have a high degree of insight because there is what we call tabernacle insight. Well, the outer court is what we call the oversight. The inner court is foresight. The holy place is insight. So we're sending people into the outer court of time to oversee and oversight, but they lack both foresight and insight. So insight gives birth to foresight, which then conceives you to oversee a ministry through the oversight. Now, did not Jesus say that for my yoke is easy and my burden is what? Light. Not L-I-T-E as in weight, but L-I-G-H-T as in illumination. Okay, so then we go come from appeal to, to be synchronized. Now back to Ephesians 4 and 11. He gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists. Now notice the first two letters, E-V. Now I want you uh, to circle the last eight letters of the word evangelist. It reveals the term angel list. Oh my God. So the evangelist is a type of an angel that's been listed by God to carry forth the gospel. Well, the gospel means go speak SPL God to a sin sick world. But the problem with the, uh, with the present day church we have a broken pulpit teaching a unbroken gospel to a broken society in the world. But the pulpit is broken because we are ordaining men and women who may be 30, 40, 60 years old, but emotionally they're five. They're still in the third trimester because they have never dealt with their pain and their trauma from their past. Now, can, can I say this as a signer? I was in Berlin, Germany um, about five and a half years ago. So I spoke uh, at a pastoral alliance conference in, um, in Berlin. And I was the keynote speaker for that Friday night. And the Holy Spirit told me, he says, the prayer that you prayed last night, Bishop, 
uh, was the wrong type of prayer concerning healing people from cancer. Well, you know, Sister Remy and, and, and Dr. Neville said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, stop praying that I remove the cancer from the body and begin praying that I remove the body from the cancer thus destroying the law that created it. The, I, it blew my mind. In other words, many times cancers and other diseases come back through remission because the law that created it of unforgiveness, bitterness, self-loathing, self-hate, self-sabotage through generational curses, as long as that law remains, the disease remains. This is the reason why we don't pray that God removes the cancer. We pray that God removes the body out of the cancer, thus destroying the law that created it. This is an appeal to heaven because we're telling the devil, not on my watch. So the evangelist is an angel, a type of an angel, that's been anointed to occupy a pulpit. Now, the term pulpit means that the preacher has been anointed by God to pull the individual from the pit of their experience. But the pulpit is in the pit today. We don't have holy pulpits like Hope Christian Center. We have corrupted pulpits with men wanting to be women, uh-oh, and women wanting to be men. God has not called a man to be a woman, and God has not called a woman to be a man. Well, you know, people say, well, you know, Bishop Dr. Oz and Dr. Phil said that, you know, there was a genetical misfunction through the anatomy. Stop. The devil is a lie. So then, appeal to synchronize. Then we have the office of the pastor. Everyone is not called to be a under shepherd. So the pastor is a man and a woman of God or a woman of God that's been seasoned with wisdom. Now you can have knowledge without wisdom, but you cannot have wisdom without knowledge. There's a great distinction between knowledge and wisdom. Well, look at the tabernacle. There is what we call tabernacle wisdom. The outer court is natural wisdom. The inner court is spiritual wisdom. The most holy place is the hidden wisdom, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians which God ordained before the world began. So we have a generation of outer court people who are trying to comprehend an inner court anointing. It's impossible. So then you, during this 40-day journey, well, we know that a day unto the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. 500 years is 12 hours of our time, and six hours of our time is 175 years to God, which means Abraham lived, notice, not just 175 years, but six hours of our time. That's another topic for another day. Then three hours, okay, uh, is 75 years. And Jesus had said in the garden to the, the apostles, could you not watch with me but one hour? One hour of our time is 44 uh, years to God. But from the crucifixion of Jesus Christ to his ascension is 44 days. We're talking about appeal to heaven in order for us to be synchronized. Then you have the teacher. Now, the interesting thing, as I come in here, we're going to give the floor open for uh, Q&A. The interesting thing about the teacher, the teacher is the only office that Paul did not say in some teachers. Why? Because the first four officers, offices must have the ability to teach. 
The prophet cannot prophesy 24 seven. Every apostle, prophet, evangelist, and pastor must have the ability to teach. So teaching is preaching at a slower pace and preaching is teaching at a faster pace, know your pace. So then, but the reason why the church is out of alignment and out of sequence, we got insecure apostles wanting to run around to be evangelists. We got high-minded pastors thinking that they are an apostle. We got broken prophets who want the pastor. If you're occupying the wrong office, you have automatically uh, dysfunctioned the sequence of the clock of time. That's why you have Black Lives Matter and Antifa and the ANC, because the church is out of alignment. In my conclusion here, now remember, appeal to heaven, appeal to be synchronized. Five minutes in this contract killer is done today. Now I want you to go back to uh, Genesis chapter eight. Oh my God. I feel a McDonald anointing on me today. Go to Genesis chapter eight, verse number one. Here is also another appeal, okay? Now notice the term here uh, in Genesis eight and one. It says, and God remembered Noah. It doesn't mean that God has a cognitional Dysfunction. God doesn't forget. God is omniscient. God knows all. God is omnipotent. He's all power. And God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. So when it says, and God, or the DNA of God, remember, it's not through cognition. It means in order for Noah to build his assignment, his watch, Noah must be remembered or reconnected back to God. So God remembered, why? Because we are the body of Christ and members in particular. So in God remembered Noah. Once Noah came into alignment, with who he was, then he could be activated into his assignment. So in Genesis chapter 8, verses 8, 10, and 12. Well, chapter 8, verses 8, 10, and 12. 8 plus 10 plus 12 equals 30. Jesus began his public ministry at the age of 30. You and I speak on the average of around 30,000 words per day. So then we got this term in Genesis chapter 8, verses 8, 10, and 12, and that word is called dove, capital D-O-V-E. Now we know, students, that Hebrew is written not from left to right. Hebrew is written from right to left. So when you take the word dove and write it from right to left, then you get a Hebrew, a Hasidical Hebrew word, ephod, or the ephod of the high priest. So the dove was sent out three times through seven days in verse 8, seven days in verse 10, and seven days in verse 12. My question is, uh, Dr. Uh, Neville McDonald and Dr. Wendy McDonald, my question is today, as we wrap this up, uh, of uh, appeal to synchronize. When Noah sent the dub out for the last time, where did it go? Well, from Genesis 8 and 12, I want you to go forward 4,000 years later to Matthew 3.16. Matthew 3, 16, 
is the baptism of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 3, 16, and Jesus, or Yeshua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a what? Dove. And lighting upon him. So the dove that Noah sent out 4,000 years ago, previously before Jesus, in Genesis 8 and 12, travels through time throughout the Pentateuch, throughout the judges, and the kings, and the queens, and the major prophets, and the minor prophets, and then flies over the embankment called Malachi, and comes down on the body of Jesus. So the dove that came up out of heaven came from the prophet Noah. And as we end this today, so then Noah sent the dove out and it landed upon the body of the voice that spoke to Noah 4,000 years previously to build the ark. And my friends, that is uh, the end of my teaching today during this first day of your 40-day uh, journey uh, called oh, Appeal God. to Heaven, uh, oh, entitled, God. Not on My Watch, from Appeal to Synchronize. And I thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Woo! Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you. What a wonderful presence of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of revelation. Won't you just go ahead and pray for the people right now, Bishop? It's just yes. such a moment. Maybe Pastor Grant can come. And just a moment right now of revelation and understanding of the, the purpose of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Beautiful. God, our Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God is saying, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hope Christian Center, your time has come to take over South Africa. You're going to influence change in Pretoria. You're Thank going you. to influence change in Johannesburg. You're going to influence change throughout South Africa. And politicians are going to come to your church to be born again. Politicians through the ANC. Politicians from the entire parliament of South Africa. They won't know why that they're going to be coming to Hope Christian Center. But the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And as the rivers of waters, he turneth it whithersoever he will. God is saying right now, someone at Hope Christian Center, mm, Thank you. you have a family member or a friend outside of the family who's been diagnosed with cancer and leukemia. God said he sent his word and he healed us, and he has delivered us from our destruction. I have already cursed that cancer, what the Lord is saying. I have already cursed that bone cancer, that ovarian cancer. Yes, Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, there are men that you men of God and sisters know who have prostate cancer. There are men who have been diagnosed with prostate cancer. I want you to know that the cancer is shrinking as we speak. Thank you, Jesus. And the cancer is not only shrinking as we speak, but God has removed the body out of the prostate cancer. Lord Jesus Christ. Women are healed, cured, and made whole from ovarian cancer. And all due respect, breast cancer. Yes. Removing the body from these diseases. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus. Not on my word. Is the Lord is saying that no that's been formed against Hope Christian Center were prosper. Yes, person who has cancer, they're healed, cured, and made whole in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It, there's a person that you know that's outside of the church who has a tumor on the left side of their cranium and their brain. But God is breaking up the tumor because the root of that tumor is unprotected. So God yes. is breaking up the brain tumor that's on the left-hand side of the brain in the cranium of this woman in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And then finally, the Lord is saying, God is multiplying your finances. It's done in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 What an amazing presence. What an amazing presence of Jesus. As you were speaking to finance right there, Bishop, you mentioned briefly about, I'd never thought of it before, how that when Moses came down from the, the mountain, they built a golden calf. Yes, and right outside the financial headquarters of the world, <laughs> Wall Street Stock Exchange, yes. the, wall, the, the New York Stock Exchange is a huge calf. Yes. Does God have a word financially for people right now in this season? In this season right now, though it was not your time, but it's your season. And those preachers here in the United States a few years ago, who laid hands on this calf, this bull, but I removed the curse from the calf from those preachers who laid hands on it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What the Lord is saying, uh, Dr. Wendy and Dr. Neville, he's God is transferring the wealth of the wicked and he's transferring it through spiritual currency. See, in order to get the physicality, the physical currency, there has to be, there, there's got to be a spiritual, a eternal currency. So yeah. the Lord is restoring the years which the canker worm has eaten. I Great. see credit is being restored to the members of Hope Christian Center. Credit yes. is healed, cured, and made whole. Not just yes. credit. People who have lost houses, you're going to get those homes back. Homes being restored. Finances being released into above and not beneath so wall street here is not in control of god god is in control of wall street and the realm of wall street is being transferred to the saints. But the Hallelujah. It's your time. Everything that there are people at Hope Christian Center who have lost jobs in homes and even friends who owe you money. Listen, God forgive those that owe you money. God, listen, God's going to give you double for your tri trouble, triple for your pain. And God, there are uh, men and women who want to get married. Listen, Wait on God. Don't go to the internet. God will send that man to you. Good sister. word. Good word. God Good word. will send that woman to you, brothers. Listen, you don't need a Halle Berry. You need a woman that knows how to pray. You listen, you need a woman of God that knows the word. Okay. You don't need a Charlie Theron. You need a woman that knows God. And God is saying, getting back to that bowl. Listen, the church 
had to be shut down during COVID-19 because we were building empire. We were building a tower of Babylon whose top may reach not to Jesus, but to ourselves. God says, I'm shutting this down. And I'm forcing the church to go back to house churches like it was 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem. And Hope Christian Center, you won't lose a penny during this shutdown. And there's right. going right. to be finances right. in not just the hundreds of thousands of dollars, in the millions of dollars that's going to come into the hands of Dr. Nabel and Dr. Wendy. Right. Well, thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Thank you so much, so Bishop. Good. Well, we, we want to thank you for being with us tonight. And I'm sure you've enjoyed Bishop's word tonight. How many have enjoyed it? Come on, let's give a big hand to the Lord and to Jesus and to, to Bishop. This is the beginning of our 40 days. And of course, I know we have curfew tonight. So <laughs> I don't want anyone to get into trouble. <laughs> We're we're going to pray together. I'm going to ask Bishop to, to pray for each and every one of us. And then I'll pray for, for Bishop. We want to pray for him and his work. And uh, we're also going to give to the Lord. And I, I want to just put uh, Bishop's uh, web page and everything up on the screens. We'll put all, so, so it'll be online. All those of you joining us at ghcc.tv, we're going to put up all of the information right now. And then you can go online and you can look at what is transpiring. Bishop, why don't you go ahead and just pray for the people uh, before we dismiss. And I'm going to pray for people here. And then we're going to give to the Lord. Amen. Eternal God, our Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, did not our hearts burn within us while you talk to us by the way today, tonight? Father God, thank you for opening eyes and minds and hearts. And we pray that you will continue to reveal to Hope Christian Center what you are thinking about her tonight. Father God, I pray right now for every saint of God, for every member of Hope Christian Center, your finances are being tripled as we speak. God is restoring credit as we speak. And Lord, we pray, we thank you, Lord, for Dr. Neville McDonald and Dr. Wendy McDonald for the global apostolic work that you have given them to be a father and a mother of many nations. Lord God, I thank you, Lord, because I love them so much. And I pray that you will bless them, bless their children, and also bless their spiritual children and multiply their spiritual seed as the stars of heaven and as the sands that are upon the seashore innumerable. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. amen. Father, we thank you for Bishop the great blessing, the word Thank that is brought you, to us tonight, that in New York City, you will open great new doors of opportunity throughout the nation, and that in places new where doors are stations, being closed, new TV that stations, doors will be opened. We thank you for it in world. Jesus' name, that everything will run and function, that you'll put correct leadership in that part of the world, that the gospel may flourish and be preached to every man, woman, boy, and girl. Bless his sons and daughters around the world that he ministers to each day and each week and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Bishop, I know you do a radio program. We have a radio station here. Is it possible to get your programs and put it on our radio station? Yeah, or let me you? find out for my producer. That's a great okay. question. That's, yes. We will find that that out and get that information we would we would love that and, and we, yes. put, we, put, we put it on our station for free and thank you for your generosity and being here with us tonight we it's thank you honor. we'll talk we'll honor. talk to and you i hope to be back again i love yes. you guys well, well we want you the standing invitation amen 
Thank you so much. Amen. I love you both. Thank you. God bless you. Thank Let me you. remind each and every one of you that during this season, not on my watch, please bring your prayer requests, praise reports, place them here in these little round baskets. We'll take them personally, pray over each and every one of them, and keep them, and let you know what God is doing. Then when you're on the internet at ghcc.tv, we ha have a prayer pastor, request. a prayer pastor on the internet all the time, and you can send in requests onto the internet, and those will be brought to us here on the platform, and we'll pray for everyone as well. And Thank I mention you. you by name, and Believe God for a miracle. This is a season of miracles. Not on my watch. Yeah. We're going to do this. Amen. Amen. And we're going to go ahead right now and as we sing, we're going to give to the Lord. All my life, you have been faithful. I woke up with that this morning. And I want us to stand and sing it. And you bring your, your tithe and your offering and you can give to the Lord. As we sing this, all my life, you have been faithful. I want you to remind yourself, all your life, he has been faithful. We might be a few minutes late. Well, hallelujah, tell the policeman you're in church, you'll pray for him. 